interviewed me while it was going on, and she said, you know, what do you think of the Jackie appearance? And I said, you know, we spent all morning talking about how he created friction, how he could be a pain in the ass and all those other things, and that's all true. Jackie was also a boatload of fun. I used to go on the road with him from time to time, had more fun than you can imagine, unbelievably generous, and really a fun guy to hang out with. So what we were talking about this morning was true, but yet one aspect of him. Do you know what I mean? So I wouldn't want it to come across that we dislike Jackie. Jackie was a pain in the neck at times, but a lot of fun to hang around with. And Jackie's here now at Sirius for a year, right? He said he signed a year contract on the Joe Hunt Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock tonight on Howard 101, produced by Jim McClure over there. And uh, he's made a, he's made a star out of Jim. I, Jim's got to grab the mic all the time on well, that He also show. loves to, once he gets a name like that, he loves to throw that. Like if Jackie were still doing his penthouse Joe column, he'd go, you know, Bully and McClure go into a bar. Like he loves putting people, <laughs> he gets all his friends' names in the jokes. So has he worked you into uh, to the joke hunt on a regular basis? He does. He usually starts off a joke with McClure goes into a bar or something like right. that. And, and you're and a he li- still does it with all of his friends too because it'd always be like Burf, Burf, or, and uh, um, um, what's uh, uh, Walrus, Burf. Uh, uh, There's a Sirianni mention at least once a show about something, and a lot of uh, Polish last names too, but are like Burfski or something like that. Do you ever notice that McClure rhymes with a whore? You know, like, hey. a whore goes into a bar. And Jim's a lifelong fan, so you must you must love that. The best Jackie experience I ever had is I went to, uh, he threw a Labor Day party I got to go out to, and it's all the lobster tank. Or oh, the, yeah. I mean, the jetty, the whole thing. He's like, hey, I'm going to swim out on the jetty now. And I sit there just laughing to myself like, this is surreal. Oh, then i got to make sure I get invited to the party this year. I miss those parties. Dave in Orlando, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, what's going on, fellas? I, I, I feel like, you know, uh, Fred you know, and Jackie, they've always, it seems like they've always been at each other, and Fred just kind of sits back and just, you know, doesn't really say a whole lot. And, and, you know, it just seems like I don't see how Jackie even has a fucking show. I mean, he just, I don't think he's funny at all. I mean, some of his jokes are, you know, stupid and juvenile. I think the only funny part about his jokes is he laughs at them all. You know, he's just, he's just not funny at all. I can't understand how he even fucking stayed on the show as long as he did. It's an opinion. I mean, I think Jackie's funny. I don't think you could take away the fact that it's a different kind of funny. I don't know that. Jackie's like Sam Kinison Edge funny, but Jackie's a different kind of funny, and he's very good at it. Well, when I talk to people about the show, sometimes they'll say, Jackie, I don't get it. What was the big deal other than the fact that he was part of the group? And then some people are like, I still right. can't believe Jackie's not there. Something's missing. you know. So Jackie will sort of you know, make you feel one of two ways. Either I don't think there are any, very many people in the middle right. when it comes to Jackie. But that's good because he prompts a reaction out of you. Let's go to Tommy in Minnesota. Hey, Tommy, you're on the wrap-up show. Um, I just to make the point, you know, it's so unfortunate. Well, actually, my favorite part of the show now is already, so I'm kind of glad Jackie left. But at the time, I was really disappointed that the show lost him, and it was due to money. Jackie went about it the wrong way. Um, Artie's being a gentleman about it, but don't you think that the show's eventually going to lose Artie all because of uh, the money he's not making? No, I think the show's going to lose Artie if it loses Artie, for a variety of other reasons, not having to do anything to do with money. Yeah, I think Artie's, I mean, he was in here the other day talking about it a little bit, not that he's going anywhere, but the schedule really is is part of what yeah. gets to him. I think that inevitably Artie would leave because he could make enough money to be set for life, but also get that kind of a uh, an opportunity. You know, it, you know er, listen, every stand-up comedian, Jerry Seinfeld is the template for every comedian. If you can get that show on a network... And it kicks, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, Tim Allen. You know, you never have to go on the road again. Or when you go on the road again, you could charge so much money, it's frightening. And you get residuals, and you work the show, and you, you're in Hollywood, and you're a star, and your ass is kissed. That's every comedian's dream. Roseanne Barr. Roseanne Barr, exactly. Yeah. So I think if Artie could get that, it not only represents less work, more money, but it represents sort of a status in the comedy community. Hey, Benji, I didn't see you over there. What happened, man? You had a chance to tell Jackie, and it seems like you just couldn't put it into words. Well, it's, I don't exactly have words to put it in. I'm, like I've said here before, at times he's been really nice to me, but at times he just always makes me try. Right, I, and that was the like, part where like, like shit. the times like, when he makes you feel like shit. It's not like, like a specific thing. It's just like, I'll give you an opposite example. You know how Vinny Favalli makes you feel right. when you call him? Sure. It, 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 it's like the opposite. Right. So I don't know how to put it into words. I mean, like I said to Robin, like, if anyone's just ever been cold to you, maybe it's in my head. I don't know. Do you think but it's that, you specifically, or he does it to a lot of people? Maybe he does. I don't know. I, and I'm not saying he's a mean person. Like I said, he's done a lot of nice things also. And it's it's actually, it's been more so since he's left the show that I've felt it. And see, that, that's a, I don't know whether you want to call it a defense mechanism or whatever, but like Jackie will, you know, the first as soon as he sees me, he'll insult me. I see that as, you know, sort of... Uh, you know, like we like each other. 
you know, he'll walk into my office and go, oh, look who's here. How you doing, Gums? And I laugh. I laugh. You know, it's it's um, we like each other. Right. He's 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 ragging on you because he actually enjoys your company. And you're I mean, you you and you and your teeth, Gary. I mean, you, do you just wait for it when he comes? Oh, in? sure. It's, yeah. it's, I, I said it's kinetic energy. Jackie mentioned my name, and I I sort of made a visual thing to Howard. I pulled my fist back. It's like waiting for the punch to come, and I knew I knew what was coming. But you know, I want to talk about another thing that went on, which is an interesting thing with Jackie and Fred, and. You know, I've known Fred for a very long time. I've been on the show for 23 years now. One of the things about Fred, and Jackie started to scratch against this, and I thought this was really weird. Fred is one of those guys who probably isn't his own biggest fan. You know, Fred's one of those guys who's not the guy to stand up and go, hey, look at me, I'm funny, or hey, I should be out in the front, and that sort of thing. And when we got into that whole discussion about Jackie being the head writer and how Fred never said anything, if you know Fred, you just know Fred would never say anything. It's just not Fred's DNA. It's not that kind of guy. I mean, I always felt that Fred didn't stand up for himself enough, that he's far more talented and did sort of let people give him a lot of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, Fred, did you ever have that conversation with Jackie or that head writer thing happened and it was just really tense business as usual? You know what? I think when I found out about it, I, it was I felt blindsided, to be perfectly honest with you. And, and I don't know. I don't understand how anybody couldn't feel that way. Well, like when Jackie said, you know, why didn't Fred speak up? It's like you. It's it's a it's a team of it's two. It's like the deal it's, was already done. The die was already cast. It's like, well, what are you going to do about it? You're going to sound like a big baby if you whine about it. So. And, and the right. worst part of the, the worst part of it, if I were Fred, was you could almost live with it if it somehow got you more money. If there was something tangible to it, but there's nothing tangible to it except to make Jackie's ego feel better. And that I think is the worst part of it. I, I think that was the other thing, and I think it actually started affecting how people would even uh, deal with you on a day day basis. You know, it's like if you had an idea for something, like dealing with the TV show people, it's like, well, Jackie's the head writer. And like, whoa, you know, I'm a writer too. I'm a contributor. I'm a creator. You know, it's like Benji has equal say and all that stuff as well. You know, he can say whatever he wants. Sal and Richard, you know, like everybody gets a turn. Nobody's, it's kind of a community effort. See, I know how I found out. I don't know if you found out the same way. The way I found out Jackie was the head writer was I was watching the Channel 9 <laughs> show and the credits went by. I went to, you know, every week I'd look at my credit. And the credits by went, went by one week and instead of writers, it was distinct head writer Jackie Martling, writer Fred Norris. And I thought to myself, well, what's that all about? And I think Jackie's defense was, I write, that's what I do. Like, Fred does sound effects. I'm yeah, not a producer. So but he's, I'm, he's, he's changing history. He's rewriting it. And Jackie's not here to defend himself. And Jackie, I apologize for that. Uh, but uh, in my opinion, you know, uh, we wrote equally. You know, he may have done more flying gags, as it were, but uh, when it came to bits or song right. parodies or things of that nature, uh, a lot of the questions and things like that, uh, you know, when, you know, there was an idea that I had one time that Howard and I kind of came up with, like, the homeless game, you know, and the goofy questions that we used to ask celebrities or send John out with, a lot of that came from, like, right here. You know, it's like I kind of innovated a lot of those types of questions. Yeah, so you have to go back and, and sort of re-examine what the show was when Jackie was here in its heyday. And yes, Jackie wrote some notes during the show, a lot of notes during the show, some of which Howard used, some of which he didn't. Fred wrote some that may not have been as many as Jackie, some maybe more of Jackie's got in, maybe they didn't. And then when the show was over, these guys would go in the back and say, you know, today we're going to work on gay squirty dancing. Right. And they would either write together, I mean very much equally, all three of them, or Howard would say, hey, I got an idea for a bit, and Fred would go home and write something, and Jackie would go home and write something. And sometimes they would be almost exactly alike, and sometimes the beginning of Fred's was great, and the be the end of Jackie's was better. Or write a song parody, and right. you know, um, J Fred might say a boy with horse teeth, and Jackie will go. They'd come in, and it would be Fred's verse, Jackie's chorus, Jackie's next verse, Fred's so next so chorus. It you know wasn't what I mean? Like you know, top heavy one way or the yeah. other. It was kind of a group community it was, effort. It was very Lennon McCartney, except for the part where. They got stuck in a partnership where one did more than the other. It was very Lennon McCartney the whole way through. And would that be fair to say? I, yeah, I would say so. And I guess Jackie had said that since he was the ultimate filter when it got to Howard, that in turn maybe made him the quote-unquote head. But he was the filter in the studio. Then he should have been head filter. Sorry. <laughs> he was the filter in the studio. He could be a pool filter. I don't know. He was not the filter. In other words... No, I understand. When, when, when those guys wrote those bits, 
it all went to Howard, and Howard would sort of edit it together. And, and like I said, Howard, Howard yeah, collaborated on a lot of it. Ultimately, too. Howard was the arbiter. I wouldn't, and I wouldn't necessarily say Jackie. Uh, he's going to get mad at me for this too. It's like he wasn't necessarily a filter as as much a traffic cop. You know, so take that for what it's worth. Okay, let's talk to Bob in Philly. Bob, you're on the wrap up show. Yeah, uh, just a great job, guys. Uh, I just like to say that it's it's great to hear Fred. When he gets all riled up, so, Jackie. <laughs> My pain Stutter, is your pleasure. If it, if, if uh, Stutter and John could come in there with Jackie and Siobhan, I would I would love it. I love those impressions. Oh, uh, there you go. Here. The roof would explode. And, and let Nicole Bass join in. Yeah. <laughs> Fred, it seems like you made a conscious effort to sort of throw the first punch, like when he came in. Cause yeah, you, you know what it is? Is like I think with Jackie too. It's like a lot of times he comes in. And uh, I just kind of wanted to mix it up a little bit more today, I think. Uh, I think he came in, and I think uh, the politeness factor is gone. I mean, I think everybody was kind of gentle with him when he came in for the roast stuff, uh, for the K-Rock stuff. Because, well, look, we all like Jackie, and you know, for all his foibles and whatnot. We all like him, and we, don't, we didn't want him to, like, you know, not come in. But now that he's coming in and he feels like he's part of the family again, then okay, let's be part of the family again. I thought it was, you know, I, I mean, listen, I lit the fuse on the whole Fred, Jackie, Head writer thing, but I also thought it was, we were in a place, it's a fascinating thing for the audience to see. It's something that we live with and people always want to know the inner workings of the show and sometimes you can show too much. But in that case, I thought it was great to see how it all went down. Absolutely. Joe in Louisiana, you're on the wrap-up show. I want to tell Fred something and then I got an important question for Gary. Okay, go ahead. Fred, you, you know Jackie just starts you, start you up just to piss you off and you play into it. Why you play into it? Because it's entertaining. And for Gary, I mean... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Joe. Uh, a huge audience, I'm a truck driver, and a huge audience is, is the truck driver. And for a lot of us, we can't get on demand in the truck. So, I mean, is there talk or possibly in the future, like a DVD collection or something? Nothing. I mean, what other? T do you get other TV in the truck? Nah. So you can't get any TV in the truck. No. Nah. Yeah, I I don't know that there's a DVD collection planned at any time, but you know, never say never to anything. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Joe. Right. Appreciate the call. Let's go to Christine in Staten Island. Hey, Christine. Hey there. How you doing? I am just so. I can't tell you how much better the show is now that Jackie's not there. Having him in today was just a reminder of how much he annoyed me. The uh, show's been better since he's been gone, since John's been gone, and since you moved to Sirius. Three best things that ever happened to the show. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, the show evolved. It's different. It's hard to say that it's better because, you know... <laughs> well, and, I'm listening. Listen, I'm are, are your clothes... Do you, do you wear cooler clothes than you wore in 1990? Right. <laughs> I would hope so. It'd be like saying, you know, a sports team, like if you had, you know, the 1958 Yankees versus the 1968 Yankees versus the 19... 86 right. Yankees. Well, I did. The two of them just spent so much time whining, and we spent so much time on the air dealing with what they were whining about before. Having both of them off, John and Jackie, has just been fantastic. Uh, it's just different. I mean, he, right. he, he, listen, John broke my balls incessantly, and I'm not going to say. The guy was a, a major part of the show, <laughs> of the show. And a major irritant. Hey, by the way, i got to tell you one funny thing I noticed today. Uh, it was just like old times, man. Howard, right. <laughs> Howard played that, um, that bit that Richard and Sal made using Jackie telling the Give Rodney a Chance joke. And I saw that early on Howard had to pull Jackie's microphone all the way down. He was laughing so hard at his own self <laughs> right. that it was ruining the bit. So Howard potted Jackie all the way down until it was over. It was, it was just one of those things. It's like, oh, I remember that. Christine, are you still there? He's his own biggest fan. Christine, wouldn't you agree, though, that some of the best moments in the show, show's history involve Jackie and John being the way they are? Well, they definitely got you riled up. And they definitely, I guess, changed the mood. You'd go from laughing to going, oh, shut up, you little bitch. But uh, <laughs> I guess that serves a purpose, the irritant kind of factor. I don't know. See, I, I love, guess it does make it more interesting. I love Jackie when you could get him riled up because there's nothing more interesting oh, than absolutely. a funny guy who stops being funny. Right, right. Hey, wait a second. And I remember like one of my favorite ones was, uh, oh, Jackie got so busted on this. Jackie came back from vacation. And Howard goes, uh, what'd you do uh, on vacation? And Jackie goes, oh, we went down to Orlando, had a great time, the Flamingo Hotel, it was great. And, you know, we thought it was weird, like, why would you ne mention the name of where you stayed? But okay. And then we found out through the grapevine that Jackie had stayed there for free if he could get a mention. And when Howard called him on it, he, like, denied it. But then once you, you know, pushed him on it a little bit, it was, yeah, but I deserve it. And it was just, it's funny to hear a funny guy not be funny. The plug thing. 
I mean, it became an art, you know, him working those plugs, and then a secondary art of you guys just breaking his balls on it. What was the most frustrating time that you can remember where Jackie like anchored in a plug or got a plug well, in there? I, I can tell you, for me, there, you know, it was it was enough, you know, on Howard's shoulders that he had to do Jackie's plug, you know, twice a day. But then we went through this really weird period where Howard also Jackie would guilt Howard into doing. His wife's plugs. You remember that? Oh, absolutely. He's like, you know, Nancy's doing a play tonight, yep. or you know, B- Big Orange Marbles playing, and and Howard would be like, God, how much more do I have to it's do? Like, you know, how far do we go down on the subsidiaries? I, I, you know, Mary's in a you know local production of Our Town. I mean, what's <laughs> next? Now, why did Howard have such a tough time saying no? I mean, Robin was saying that she always told him this should be in Gary. I think you made the joke that Gar- Jackie would have been gone at eighty seven if if Howard listened to Robin. Why was it so difficult for him? Because. I mean, Howard's really is, like, I was going to say even to Artie, show me a person that Howard's fired since Artie's been here. You know, Howard will complain and threaten to fire you, but I know over the years we've been, you know, like I've come to him, I I maybe I've had to fire one or two people in the history of the show, and I've come to Howard with, like, there was one guy that just absolutely had to go, and I went to Howard and he's like, you know, gee, are you sure? It's like, I'm like, Howard, dude, we got to get rid of this guy. But he doesn't, you know, at the end of the day, he just doesn't like to do that to people. He feels bad. And also, I think in, in terms of like Jackie, he was like very loyal right. to what Jackie, you know, the service that he provided, uh, you know, and on some ways, you know, I don't agree with the way Jackie went through his contract negotiations, but, uh, you know, that's the way it is. But I, Howard always stood up for him with the exception of the last time. And even the last time, Howard was telling him, trying to do him a favor, saying, listen, Jackie, I'm not going to do it this time. I mean it. I'm turning off the microphone. I'm going to say it off the air. And Jackie must have thought he was just bullshitting. Yeah, my analogy I would always give would be like if, you know, one of, if one of the guys from Friends, you know, after the first five years went and, you know, bitched about his contract and they were like, okay, and then the next five years he bitched about it again. The third time you go back, they're sick of you. They're sick of you and they're sick of your shit. Right. And they're just going to be like, okay, let's find a new Ross. Benj, what were you going to say? I always thought that Howard's divorce, like he got divorced in 98 or 90, 99, 99. And I figure... Once he went through that, he can he he looks at change a lot differently. I don't remember, you know. I, I got to be you, that may be true. I don't remember the the way the dates lined up. I really don't. I don't remember. Well, Jackie left in two thousand one. He got divorced in ninety nine. So to follow your metaphor, your Beth is that the deal? <laughs> is that what you're trying to tell everybody? A shorter, fatter <laughs> Beth. But uh, no, no. I'm just. I think that I, this is my guess. Like I think anything in his, that that had to be the most revolutionary thing in his life. Revolutionary change. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think other things seem as big anymore. I mean, I sort of hinted at this when we had this conversation on the air last week, and I don't want to paint Howard in uh, in any sort of a weird or a weak light, but I will tell you, the weekend that, you know, Howard called me that weekend. He's like, listen, it's done. Jackie's not coming back. I just got off the phone with Tom. The last offer was made. We're moving forward. And for Howard to speak those words was very difficult. And I remember we talked about who would we get to sit in, and we talked about, um, he goes, hey, you know, Ron Zimmerman, the comedian, he'd like to sit in. I remember it was a big deal. I had to go to Westchester Airport on a Saturday night. I put on my credit card a first-class ticket for him to come in overnight. But I remember when Howard gave me the go-ahead, he's like, fly him in. That was really the finality of it, that, like, we're putting a different guy in that chair. And um, it was hard for him. It was hard for him to do that. He did not want to do that. It, it, it wasn't what he wanted, but it, he's like, I have to move ahead. Josh in Louisville, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys. Always enjoy the show. I wanted to, uh, first off, give you guys props. John, uh, John and Gary, the other night on uh, Pharrell's show, you guys were great. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Was Will, fun. Yeah, Will co-hosted, too, and he did a great job as well. Oh, yeah, you and Will were amazing, but I remember Gary patching in from his house, and that was good, too. That was fun. That was cool. I wanted to give you, uh, you guys props, because I think the three of you are kind of like pillars of the show, just for the fact that you're, like, real stable. You, I don't see you three as characters. And that's how I, I didn't really listen to the old shows a lot just because of where I live. You know, it was on and off different radio stations. So once satellite came, it was really a boon for me. But just listen to the old shows like on Master Tape. I don't have anything against Jackie. I think what he, you know, did for the show in the early days was really funny, especially now that you've got all those sound drops of that laugh. I mean, it always kills me. But the point I was telling Steve when I called in was the way I see, you know, the difference between like Fred and Jackie, I really give Fred a lot of props and I know he's kind of the you know the silent character there if you will but he's really evolved i think with the show and i don't see any evolution in jackie jackie seems like that classic character 
And, you know, I think that's what makes a big difference and why some people feel like they hate Jackie and love Artie or vice versa. But, but there's no way you know to know what I mean by that. There's no way to know if Jackie evolved with the show because he hasn't right. been here to evolve with it for the last six years. He may have stayed with the show. And in these six years, maybe his role would have evolved. Maybe he would have been more vocal on the air and less writing. And everybody loves to, you know, throw that Artie versus Jackie comparison out there, but it's not fair. And other than the chair, it's not really fair because Artie doesn't write. You know, Artie is on air and, and right. does his thing and he creates a different function. Totally, it, it's it's really apples and oranges there. But he brings up a good point, Fred. Do you feel like you've evolved? You know. Forget just, I mean, you've well, been with the show for a very long everything's time. everything's going to change, you know. It's like when, when certain people come in, it's like, you know, you leave a little bit more room for, like, Artie to say his piece. If there's any uh, effect on me, it's like maybe I do speak a little bit less on the air because, like, Artie's there. He kind of fills the space, and he fills it well. And uh, when somebody's on a roll, you know, my, my thought on that is, like, you know... It, Put your ego aside. It's like you do what's best for the show. Is that hard for you? Because sometimes, I mean, yeah, thing, it's kind of like chipping away at what you do. I mean, you used sometimes, to do, yeah, you used to do practically everyone else's job in this room. Fred did my job before I did. Right. It, just I mean, so you were right. the producer, and that's why I think one of the reasons, like when a head writer comes along and says, "I'm head writer," and uh, kind of, I mean, that was one thing that I, I have to go back to that whole thing too. Uh, it was like an interesting point when when Jackie was talking about the writing. And then when Benji came in, uh, Benji didn't know how to articulate it, but I think there was a little hostility on Jackie's part towards uh, Benji. Yeah, it was sort of like, "What's you know? this guy doing here? I, exactly. I carved out this spot. Why is he, you know, right? Why is he here?" And I, I think, I, and I think the other thing too is like there was like a bit of diminishment. It's like, "Oh, well, what are you handing me? Oh, what are you handing me?" And it was, you almost, know, it's, it's, it's basically devaluing the contributions of other people. You mean like he hasn't earned the right to hand that piece well, of paper? And it was more than that. If I could, it was more than that because. You know, one of the things that Howard taught me over the years on the show is like he does, good, interesting, and talented people come from everywhere. That guy's an intern. So what? If he's funny, I don't right. give a shit. You know what I mean? But I think there was a little bit of you know, oh, the intern's going to sit in here, Benji, the intern. But it's like, so what? Everybody right. comes from somewhere. One of the things that fascinated me when I first came here was the Thursday meeting because I'd always heard about it but never been in it. And then when I got in it, I realized everyone who works here is basically in it. And then, that took me by surprise because a lot of people would figure, okay, it's a room with Howard and Fred and Benji and Sal and Richard, and that's it. But it's not the person. It's the idea, and the right. idea can come from anywhere. That's right. right. And, one and of the, it can go in any direction. And one of the other interesting things that I, I, I always wanted to ask Fred about was, you know, Jackie left, and I know Benji was here, but we didn't have Richard and Sal with us. And I don't know how comfortable Benji felt in this aspect of the show, but I remember when it came time to write, you know, the first set of questions for Stuttering John, or it came time to write the first bit of the first song parody, it in essence fell completely on Fred. And I remember thinking, for, for me looking, it became a lot more pressure for Fred. Fred had to do it all now. Did you ever feel that? Uh, you know what? I, it's, I was I was there before Jackie, and I was there after Jackie. But it just so, seemed you know, like a lot more work for you. It, it was probably a lot more work, but you know, it's like uh, this is what you're trained right. to do, so to speak. Fred, what was the toughest moment for you as like everybody sort of came in and 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 started filling these roles? Like, was there any figuring point out where to where to put your talents, where to you know, because like you want to give people room to breathe. You know, you want to give them, it's like if you're hiring someone to do a specific function, you don't want to smother them. You don't want to like, you know, like, oh, well, what are you doing? It's like, you do your thing, I'll do my thing, and you try and figure out what your thing is at that point. Okay. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> Josh, thanks for the props and thanks for the call. Uh, thanks a lot. Hey, I want to tell Benji, congrats on the weight loss. You better kick everybody's ass. I'm backing you, man. Thanks, man. By the way, I, the other thing I have to say is Jackie does look pretty damn good. For, less, for a than geezer? A, less than a year away from 60. He really is. He'll be 60, my he, he, ass. No, he, turned fi he turned 59 on February 14th. Okay. So I think, I think he looks he's, pretty he's good. still floating that rumor. <laughs> Let's talk to Jerry in Cleveland. Hey, Jerry, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, good morning, everybody. Fred, I'm going to use that excuse blustery. That's the best excuse I've ever heard. There you go. Hanging out with somebody. But what I wanted to tell you guys, Fred, do you remember the Howard Roast at K-Rock when Jackie absolutely bombed and you saved it i do remember that you jackie, guys have got to play that again gary remember that jackie, i do jackie doesn't do well at roasts strangely jackie. enough well are we talking about are we talking about the roast at k-rock or are we talking about the channel nine roast no there was a couple of no roasts. no this was a k i remember it specifically it was a k-rock oh i know which one right, it was right, right wasn't it right after howard got divorced yes jackie, so. absolutely that's right um, it was. It was. And Fred, you came in there. It was the funniest thing. You've got to play that, that at some point. <laughs> it was great. And Gary, one thing, 
you have one of my all-time classic moments that no one has ever spoken of in years. Do you remember there was a contest, and a guy came in with a glass eye, and you came out before he was on. He said, Howard, I think this guy might be faking it. And then he took his glass eye out. Right. Do I, do remember, remember I do remember that. Oh, yeah, I just, I never forgot that. That was yeah. one of the greatest moments. <laughs> hey, Jeff, nobody bats a thousand. <laughs> Jerry, did you, did you like hearing Jackie in there today? Oh, absolutely. It was great. And Fred, Fred just, it, it just, he takes care of Jackie. I know that they're doing a, they're working on a spotlight series with Jackie. I don't know when it's going to run, but I know that one of the things that has to be in there is that Monday after we did the Channel 9 roast and Jackie bombed and Jackie was thoroughly convinced that we had told everybody in the audience and everybody on the dais not to laugh. And I think that the no, worst... nobody had to tell them. And I think that the worst part <laughs> the worst part about it was I actually did well on the roast. I went and got some joke book and I told the band to give me rim shots and stuff. And again, the, the expectation for me was low, but I got laughs and Jackie just, he bombed. He now, just bombed. Now the, and you okay. know, he spent, he had, his whole life was, you know, if I could just get on the roast at the Friars Club, everyone would see. Jackie was, in his mind, the roast comedian. Now, I was going to say, the type of comedian he is, the Friars Club guy, he, like, does it surprise you that he's not great at roasting? Yes, it surprises me. Me too. It I'll surprises be me. Because I think he gets too caught up in the Friars way of doing things. Like, there's almost like there's a template for doing it instead of just being, like, listen, if I told Jackie we were doing a roast, but let's just sit around, have a couple of beers, and let's goof on Sal, he'd be a riot. But if I said we're roasting Sal, it might be a whole different act. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, Brian in Baltimore, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys, how's it going? I was going to say I'm an everyday listener. I've actually been late for work when I forgot to bring my radio with me. I actually turned around and showed up late for work just so I made sure I had my radio with me. Well, thank so, you. But uh, I just want to say it was nice hearing Jackie again. I mean, you know, it's a totally different show, night and day. And I honestly believe that uh, if Howard had ever went to Sirius, you probably never would have heard ever heard of Jackie again. Now, since he's been on Sirius, he's got a little more leeway, a little more uh, involved in the programming, maybe. Um, I've tried listening to Jackie's show in the evening, uh, and I, I just, it's almost unlistenable. I mean, I just can't listen to it. The show's so different. Um, but, you know, I, I, I enjoy Jackie coming in there and saying hi every, while, but every once in a while, but um, the Artie comparison is just not even there. I mean, Artie actually contributes throughout the whole show and talks throughout the whole show, where Jackie usually didn't talk that much. I mean, he may have passed notes and stuff like that. You heard him chime in every once in a while, maybe a laugh here and there, but other than that, it's not like Artie how he, he's almost like a guest on every day. But, you know? but that was an evolution. You know, when Artie sat down, he didn't talk as much at the beginning, <laughs> right. and I showed Hardy, Artie how to write a note, meaning where to put it, and like three weeks in, Artie was just sort of like, I'm not comfortable... That just doesn't work for me. By the time I get a thought, put it on paper, put it down, I'd rather just say it. But it was a big evolution for Howard, too, because no one had ever sat there and spoken that much. But, and uh, it was everything just you had to get used to it. I also think, like, before I worked here, I wasn't a hardcore listener. When I thought of the show, I thought of Howard, Robin, Gary, and actually Stuttering John. And then I, I was aware of Fred doing sound effects, and I, I knew the name Jackie. But that's that's I, when I thought of the show it was Howard, Robin, you, and Stuttering John. That's how I thought of it. And I think most of the people we hear from callers are more hardcore listeners. I don't, th you know, I don't think people are, are as aware of everything as we are. Well, I think they are now. I think most of the people that are here now are hardcore listeners and are aware of everybody. But we have picked up a lot of new people who don't know the cast. You know, it was a weird thing when we pick up a new affiliate. It was, we, you know, Howard would always figure like, how do we explain to Memphis, you know, who. Uh, uh, Janie the cleaning lady is, who Ted the janitor is, who Sirianni is. You know, it was always a hard thing, and you couldn't go back. We were picking up affiliates so quickly, you couldn't go back and explain it every week. You just sort of had to jump on the train and hope you figured it out as it went along. All right, let's talk to Mike in Florida. Mike, welcome to the wrap-up show. Yeah, how are you guys doing? Um, I was wondering, when you guys first brought Artie in, was he on a trial basis, and, you know, how long was... You know, before you guys finally made the decision to keep him on. Absolutely on a trial basis, and it was very day-to-day. -day. Everyone that sat in that chair was day-to-day. -day. I, I would try, I talked about this on past shows, but I had to book somebody in that chair every day, and it was fun for the first month, and then it became unbelievably tedious and stressful because lots of people who I thought were very talented just didn't work for the seat, so I would have to pass on them, and, and then... Um, you know, I would fill it every week. So we would try to let somebody come in for, you know, we sort of figured out two days is good. So if somebody's sucking on the first day, 
the second yeah. day, you, you know, because you don't know how it's going to be. You don't want to be stuck with somebody. Absolutely. And if it was a comedian that you knew was good, you'd say, you know, hey, like we'd say, Joe Rogan wants to come in. Let, you know, Joe, come three, four, five days, whatever he wants to do. Kimmel wants to come in, you know, five days, whatever he wants to do. Corolla, let him do whatever they want. Comedian we haven't heard of? All right, we'll give it a shot. Tell him to come in for a day. So with Artie, we remember that he was funny on the show, but I think we gave Artie, I don't know, two days to start. You well, know, I, I think he made the best decision ever by bringing Artie in. And, you know, it was also good here in Jackie. It was like old times, but I, I think Artie makes the show and a, a lot better. And I think the show has been a lot better since you guys been to Sirius. And I love you guys and, you know, keep up the great work. And I want to say what's up to Fred. What's up, dude? All right, man. You guys, you guys keep up the good work, man. Love listening to you. Thanks, Thanks. Mike. Thanks a lot for your call, Sal. What did you you want to say something about the, when you first came in? Yeah, Hi, I just want to apologize <laughs> for something I'm about to say that probably will be wrong and in affect in every human being in the world. <laughs> Thank you, Sal. For, first of all, Fred should be on the joke hunt. He'll definitely save the show. <laughs> just commenting after every one of Jackie's now jokes. Now you can go after Sal, Jackie. And the, the the thing is, what I learned, and I used to love Jackie, I still love Jackie, the times have changed. What I learned between Fred and Jackie, and, and Fred went through a lot of bullshit, and so did Benji with Jackie, is that when I first came in here, and Fred is the head writer of the show, hands down, when I started first writing for Howard and stuff, I wasn't really quite getting it. I was very abrasive. I was very brash with my stuff. I was heavier. And Fred would take me aside, and he would help me fine-tune things. He would help me find that, that medium. And that's the difference between Fred and Jackie. Like, I was a newcomer, and Fred didn't have any resentment. Instead, he would help me become a better writer. And that's the difference between him and Jackie. And that's why I think when Fred was on the air today, I really admired his resentment because... The show does come. The show comes first with Fred, and it's all about the show. And, that, and I appreciate well, I don't that. Know if resentment is the right word, but I appreciate the compliment. And it's true. I mean, the guy has been extremely helpful, and I'm really grateful, Fred. Thank you. Now, Benji, did Jackie or Fred or anybody take you under a wing and sort of help you along in that process as you as you came on? Did anyone, uh, I mean, I mean, Sal saying Fred sort of helped fine tune his his stuff. Is that who was who was giving you that feedback and helping shape your stuff? I don't know. I mean, I, don't I, know I, I, I think one of the, one of the actually asked anybody because Benji's a, a different kind of performer, I think, than like Sal in that respect. I think Benji's in you know not that Sal is an original, but Benji's definitely has his own way of doing things, right? And he eventually finds his own way. But I'm yes. in, I'm inspired by a lot of things. Like right. I'll I'll see something Fred wrote, and I'm like, wow, that's a neat way to look at it. Or I'll see something Sal does, and I'm like, ah, that's a that's a I love. When I when I see or hear a different way of looking at something, so it's inspiring, yeah. like 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 uh, throughout life. And the beauty of Benji is you don't want to fine tune Benji. Benji, no. I mean, if, if having sat in those meetings again, Benji has like some of the most outrageous ideas ever. And some of them I look at, I go, oh my god, we're all, we'll, we'd all be arrested. But then somebody will go, well, wait a minute, that's insane. But what if you did this? Right. And I don't think you want to fine tune him. That's the beauty of what he brings to the show. Joe in Florida, you're on the wrap up show. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, Fred, good to hear from you, man. Good to see you, too. Um, I just have a question. I was wondering, like, one of the most annoying things about comedians for me is when they laugh at their own jokes, and <laughs> it's notorious for that. And you can even know when Jackie would flip a note to Howard because he would be laughing at his own joke before Howard even got done with it. And I was just wondering if you guys found that annoying or if you just found that to be one of Jackie's quirks. The preemptive chuckle, you mean? Yes, exactly. See, I think I could shed a little light on this because... I knew Jackie, or I knew of Jackie, long before I ever worked for the show. There was a comedy club out on Long Island called Governors. It used to be a rock club that my friends and I would hang out at. And then one day we went there and they said, you know, close for renovations. It's going to be a comedy club. So when it opened, we would go there. And Jackie was the MC of the club. No matter what comedian was playing, Jackie was the opening act, the MC, the whole deal. And I don't know whether this was a thing that Jackie thought of consciously or whatever, but we would watch a comedian... And you could hear Jackie howling from the back of the bar. It wasn't a very big place. And I never figured, like, I, I once asked Jackie about it. I didn't get a straight answer out of him. But it seemed like he was there to help the comedian. That's what he's doing, to help the comedian. Yeah, but, and I think it's a habit that he just never lost. But I would love to ask those comedians, did you actually appreciate that? I think as, as a performer. I think they did. I don't know. I think as a performer, if you've got it in your mind, all of a sudden you hear the, this, this, this thing sounds like a squeaky water pump over in the corner. Yeah. And you're trying to get a riff going. And all of a sudden it's like, and you're thinking, there's that noise again. There's that noise again, as opposed to like a genuine laugh. See, and our, my friends and I all knew who he was, and we loved him immediately. Like when Jackie came to the show, in my mind, Jackie was a celebrity because I'd already seen him twenty times at Governors, and my friends and I all knew him as the really funny guy who got the who got the show going. 
You know, that's how we thought. Yeah, of but them. you know what? Back in the day when I would drive and listen to the crew, you know, Fred and Jackie, it got to a point when whenever Howard said something funny and Jackie came in with that loud, ridiculous laugh, it was almost like it wasn't even funny anymore. You just shrug your shoulder and goes, Jackie, you would just say to yourself, Jackie joke, Jackie joke. I'm not and, and it wasn't, the flow was actually getting killed. I'm not saying it worked here on the radio. I'm just telling you how I think it started and it worked for me in the club. I agree I, I, with you I think on that. Jackie, ja- Jackie laughing at comedians trying to make it when nobody else is laughing is very misleading to the comedian. Because when that guy goes out <laughs> and does it without Jackie there with his so-called Jackie laughter jokes and bombs, it's a it's a terrible feeling. So that's how he uh, ruined Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were we were doing the music special and going through this, you know, all the parody songs. Right. You you did know line by line who wrote what line right. because yeah. you would clearly hear Jackie chime oh, in. Absolutely, and uh, that. But again, that's a signature moment of the show. My favorite part of a boy with horse teeth is the guy goes, he's got fourteen pound incisors. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just clearly Jackie wrote that line. Caroline in Jersey, welcome to the wrap up show. Hi, guys. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm pretty good. It's just so nice to hear Fred again for so long. You know, you never hear from him anymore. And as much as I love Artie, um, what you guys touched on before, yeah, I thanks. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you don't get to hear Fred as much. It's great to hear from Jackie. Um, I'm a longtime fan. It's nice to hear his laugh again. But, you know, uh, it's definitely at that, those days you heard Fred a lot. Uh, a lot more than you do now, and I, I, I really would like to hear the King of Mars a lot more now. I'll try and do my best. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Wow, I think I got a date. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in love with you, with you for years, Fred. That makes one of us. <laughs> Thanks, Caroline. I appreciate the call. Let's talk to Billy in Connecticut. Hey, Billy, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, what's up? What's up, fellas? I saw Fred at Mount Vernon at uh, the Bayou when he was with King Norris or whatever, but I just wanted to ask, you guys remember a time that there was a note being passed. It was like Jackie was the head writer, but something was said that shouldn't have been. And it was a big argument. You guys were searching around in the trash for a note that was passed. It was about 15 years ago, man. I remember that like it was yesterday. doesn't ring a bell wow. to me. Now, I wish I could help you, man. I, I Can you frame it in some point yeah. of reference? Like, I can't. Was you there know, anybody I, else a so guest? It's so weird, man. I wish I could. I, I can't remember exactly what it was about. It was something was said, and I don't even know. Maybe Gary smoking or I don't something weird. I don't remember. There's not ringing a bell. We're drawing no. blanks here, but anybody no. listening, if you remember what uh, Billy's <laughs> referring to here, give us a call. We'll talk about it. All right, Teddy, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we got to talk about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We'll keep taking your Jackie calls and Fred calls and Chubby Checker and that letter. And, come on, baby. And where that's coming from. You're listening to the Wrap Up Show only on Howard 100 and Howard 101. Welcome back to the Wrap-Up Show. John, Gary, Fred, Benji, now joined by Artie Lang. And your calls at 888-STERN-100, 888-783-7610. Let's talk to Chris on Long Island. Hey, Chris, welcome back to the Wrap-Up Show. Hey, how you doing? Doing okay. What's on your mind? Well, I, uh, I'm i listening, and I'm kind of I'm a little surprised by what a lot of people have to say. I've been a listener for, gee, 20 years now. And what I'm surprised about is that how many people are beating up on Jackie? I thought Jackie was absolutely amazing and hysterically funny. Now, he may have laughed at his own jokes, but I thought when he left, the show took a turn for the worse. I, I really do feel that way. But do you think it's still taking a turn for the worse? Like, I agree with the first part of what you said. I'm goofing on Jackie for laughing at his own jokes, but I thought Jackie was very good on the show. Jackie left, and for a while, we just didn't know what to do. You know, you take a major piece out of the puzzle a major piece out of the chemistry, and it's going to be different. And, w- and then we tried to figure out what to do, and then we found a piece that fit again, and I think the show found its footing. You, know, you, you think that, it's worse now than it was, say, 10 years ago? Listen, the other day I was listening at 1 o'clock in the morning. I was listening to the Masterpiece Theater, I think it's called. Right. And I was, I was listening to the Jackie Puppet, the whole ordeal with, uh, with Conan on that time, and I got home. I was driving home from work. Um, I'm a cop. And I'm driving home, and I have never in my life been inspired to turn my computer on when I got home to finish listening. Yeah, but you, listening. Know what, you know what you just told me? You don't miss well, Jackie, you miss Billy. You miss the Jackie puppet. You know what I mean? Well, <laughs> I know, but Jackie was a big part of that. And yes, oh, absolutely, I miss Billy, too. Definitely. But, but, but Jackie was a big part of that, that, that whole bit. I never laughed so hard. But, but how, how is Jackie a part of the Jackie puppet bit? It's all Billy doing the voice. Well, he was, he was beating up on Jackie, and like they said during the show, Jackie wrote a lot of lines for the Jackie puppet to say. 
I think Fred wrote more of those. <laughs> all right, well, all right, but during that broadcast, they were you guys were goofing on the fact that Jackie wrote his own line. If he wrote his own line to to make fun of himself, but it was yes, absolutely. That was a great. That was amazing. I never laughed so hard. I had to finish listening. At 2 o'clock in the morning, all I wanted to do was go to sleep, but I had to finish listening. Okay, and, thanks, Chris. I don't think anybody here is saying Jackie's no. not funny or Jackie well, it wasn't, wasn't funny. I thought he was great. Yeah, yeah I, I, unless somebody wants to disagree right. with well, me. No, it's, it's like when you hear the best songs of 1995, like every number one hit from 20 years ago. 20 years from now, all the number one hits from right now are going to sound the best. All right. Okay, let's we go. Gotta, to, we got to put out a CD of Benji that's analogies. That's cousin Benji. <laughs> a CD of Benji wrap up show analogies. <laughs> Tim in New York, you're on the wrap up show. Hey now, <laughs> what's going on, Tim? We're still stunned. <laughs> I've been listening to you guys for 20 years. This is about since you came to the Albany area, and you know uh, I, I got to chime in about Jackie. Although Artie, you do a great job, and you're. It, it, very funny, and you do bring a, a different type of uh, comedy to the show. But years ago, with Jackie and Fred, especially some of the, the classic fights that you guys had, were some of the funniest moments. Now, last caller brought up about uh, Master Tape Theater and bringing back some uh, Billy West, which was great, but you get a chance to listen to, to Jackie and, and feeding off of Howard, which was absolutely hysterical. And some of the most funniest things how came out of Howard's mouth were written by Jackie and, and Fred, for that for that matter. But Jackie brought an element to the show that Artie didn't bring, but Artie's more vocal into the in the program. Yeah, I mean, well, not everybody realizes this. I don't. I've never written a thing. I don't write. We anything. talked. We talked about yeah. that earlier. How it's just that you know we gave you the opportunity to write, and you said. I can say it faster than I can write it, and then it just sort of that that element sort of went away. Right. But but um, you know, oh, fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> it's, it's something to do with uh with um, what, I can't remember what he was talking about. Now. Well, if you remember, we're here. It's all right. Let's talk to Adrian in Jersey. <laughs> You've got Adrian's got some theory, I think, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm a big I'm a big uh, uh, Artie fan. You know, I, I I love listening to his stories. I actually think Howard cuts his stories off too quick, but uh. I think that, uh, don't you think it's a little coincidental that all this talk about Artie's leaving, or could he be leaving, and then all of a sudden Jackie's here? Like, are they trying to pave the way? Maybe, uh... They who? Get a, no, uh, I think you the guys only they is Jackie. They would be me and Howard, and I can tell you that this yeah. is absolutely not the case. <laughs> okay, cause, uh, you know, I was even thinking that even if Artie, Artie seems to have a hard time with Mondays, maybe just give Jackie, um... The is Jackie there Monday. with you telling you what to say? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, if they'll go for five days a week, maybe we can get we can, uh, one, <laughs> one day a week in there, and, and maybe, and, 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 and if Artie takes a vacation. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I like that I don't idea. Want Art, listen, I don't want Artie to leave. I want him to stay. I'm, I'm thinking of a way to maybe keep him here. Maybe we can, if, if Artie needs Mondays, give, give, give Artie Monday off just so he can stay here. I don't want Jackie you back. Think, you think Artie really needs a five-day weekend? Yeah, I, I like do, that. Yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, I, I Thursday do. week is nice. I, I actually do think he does. I think he needs uh, to to come back to like actually coming back to the surface for <laughs> Monday, like coming from underwater. He needs to to get his lungs back. He needs to come out of the sea, right? Yeah, yeah, I, what yeah. I need is a physical trainer. That's what I need. All right, thanks for your call, Adrian. I uh, I actually remember what I was going to say. I was going to say that with Jackie. To a smaller extent, and with John, to a much larger. That was even more John, although ja John would start it, and Jackie could fuel it with notes. Do you know what I mean? That's fun to but listen you know, to. It's I mean, a nightmare you know to be involved with, but it's very of, fun to listen. I read a lot of email, though. Hold on a second, just gonna no. But I mean, it was you know, I mean, they would really, I mean, they could really. But I also read a lot of email that goes totally to the contrary. We're hap we happen to be hearing from like I think a lot of old school listeners. There are a lot of people that say they listen in the master tape theaters and they can't stand it. When they hear like Jackie's voice on the air, or when they hear John's voice on the air, so it's like, I see. I so who do you listen to? Yeah. I, I think you just do the shows that you do the best, and, and right. that's it. I loved Jackie and John ganging up on anybody, but when it was me, I right. fucking well, yeah, hated yeah, it. It's like, you know, and you know, J you know, John would start. You know, John's the whole person that started the myth that I'm fucking pussy whipped, and that all came from John. And then Jackie would just pile on with notes and stuff, and it would, you know, and it would make me crazy. To the point I would go home and my wife would be like, you know, why am I being portrayed like Look, this? That's an element of the show that everybody, I mean, Artie, you as a fan growing up, I'm sure, you, you treasured. You knew when it was coming and, and I'm sure you guys had a different perspective on it because a lot of times you were in the crosshairs, but 
that's something I do think people miss. This show is is in sort of uh, uncharted waters when it comes to the amount of time it's spanned. If you think about it, it's like Fred said, old school listeners. You have people who were listening 25 years ago. You have people who started 10 years ago. Right. You have people, if someone started listening five years ago, which is very believable, they never knew the show without me. Well, right. But, you know, it's like, so you got all these different opinions. Some people don't know to have anything to compare me to because they've only heard me. I've been here six... Like staying power. Right. I mean, the fact that you have people who started with the show... 30 years ago. You have people who started with the show 10 years ago. You have people who started with the show since we got the satellite. It's the one show that is that seems to be relevant over a 30-year period and still continues to be relevant to this day. That says yeah. a lot. That I, definitely says a lot about the nucleus of the show. Like, you know, you know the sort of Mount Rushmore of uh, Howard and, and Fred, Robin, and, and Gary, that they were able to, to do that. I mean, I'm the young guy on the show, and I'm 39. You know, that's... It's just a rare, unique thing. It's a great thing, but th because of that, you're going to get opinions from all over right. the stratosphere. And but nobody's right. It's just an opinion, you know. And, and it's funny, too. Like, I was out in Vegas this weekend, and the guy walks up to me, and he's in his mid-20s, and he says, you know, I've been listening to you since I was eight years old. And that's I freaky. hate those people. No, but it's, it does freak out. <laughs> I hate those it makes you feel old. Because you know, he's looking old to me, and I'm going like, right. fuck, if he looks that old, and, shit. Uh, yeah. It's really weird, you know, <laughs> my, my birthday's tomorrow. One of the reasons why I've been, thinking of, I've been thinking about it so much this week, it's just been in my head, is because it's a huge milestone for me, and the milestone is that I will be 46 tomorrow and be working on the show bananas, for, 20, the kick. for 23 years. Wow, yeah. And I realized, like, I'd always thought, even years and years ago, when will I get, I've now reached the point where I have now been doing this for half my life. And it's a big milestone for me in a positive way. No, that's a huge... Well, in a, on a smaller level, I, at my gig in Boston this weekend, I ran into three different kids who said, in the fifth grade, I started watching you on Mad TV, and this is a 24-year-old kid sitting in right, front of me. Right. And it, one other kid said, me and my buddies in the sixth grade snuck in to see Dirty Work, and now I'm looking at a 25-year-old you know, kid, and I'm going, God, the, the shit I'm responsible for. Oh, the, flip, <laughs> the flip side of it that really makes me feel creepy is, you know, the girl who tells you she's going to listen to you when she's 12 and you want to fuck her because she's well, hot now. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> look, getting old sucks. There's a lot of freaky things about it. I'm looking for Sal. He usually has something to say about that. Adam in L.A., you're on the wrap-up show. Yeah, hi. I wanted to actually criticize Howard today during the Jackie segment. It was yet another example of how Howard changed since uh, sometime last year, and nobody talks about it. How so? Uh, other than Howard trying to interview Jackie about his personal life, which Jackie didn't go for, of course. Uh, surprise, surprise. Howard, after that, was basically trying to get out of the segment. He wasn't interested at all in the old ball busting. And uh, even when Fred and Jackie were going out, he kind of chuckled at it a bit. But Howard is basically not interested in hassle or stress. Uh, he considers Jackie definitely part of that whole half. Then, then you must—you clearly didn't see the enormous smile on Howard's face right. while Jackie and Fred were arguing. Yeah, yeah. I disagree Absolutely. completely. He likes arguing, and you want to know something? I—I I think he the want to get into it. And I think actually it's going to sound like a strange thing. I think Howard is actually becoming a fan of his own show because he actually <laughs> got to like step back and hear what you guys hear. <laughs> Listen, oh, a lot of times he was like directly involved. I mean, you know, you gotta, you know, like Jackie provided a lot of friction on a daily basis. This was the friction without the drama, without the the sidebar that Jackie right. would usually present, like and she was in between contract negotiations and whatnot. You know, <laughs> every time the Jackie situation comes up, I hear more and more stories from you guys that just make my mouth just stay open. Like Jackie purposely, maybe you know not having a good time on the air to ca to sabotage the show it wasn't, and and I you mean, know you know it wasn't to sabotage the show I, it, it's so, it's so much no it's so much more subtle than that. well that was that was turn real, off my light i mean you, we talked <laughs> about nothing this, subtle about that that was really uncomfortable I, but i will but, not be lit but imagine <laughs> you're doing a comedy show and a guy announces you know a minute before you start the show that um he's not very happy that the contracts aren't going well and that he may not be here tomorrow and then you just flip the switch and try to be funny. Contract not going well. Like, we'll be here tomorrow. Try to have a good time. It would almost <laughs> seem like Jackie was pouting. Like I wouldn't say, <laughs> I wouldn't say he came here to fuck with the show. I don't think that was his intention, but he still did it. Right. Do you know what I mean? And it would be weird. Do you agree? Absolutely. Were there points where he was just going through the motions or not even going that well, far? It would be like I'll write these jokes, but I'm not going to have fun. <laughs> although, although I will say the fun fun times for me, but it wasn't when he was really having a bad times. So with like the times he would come in, maybe he was doing a, a gig, you know, in ho hos the night before, and he's sitting at his little station with his little pen in his hand, 
and his head would be on his chest. And he was falling asleep about halfway through the show. I, I loved those moments. It's like he's trying to write a joke, and, and he's like... <laughs> and, and already goes, and you never accused him of being on drugs. No, I, well, uh, I can relate to that on a bunch of levels, unfortunately. Matt in Tampa, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, fellas, this is, uh, this is a real pleasure and honor to, to be able to talk with you guys. I'm a long-time listener, and <clears throat> going back to what you were saying just a minute ago, um, I just turned 40 years old a couple months ago. And I can remember being in seventh grade and talking to uh, to Howard and Fred on the air up in D.C. where I grew up. So it's a real pleasure to be on the air. I appreciate you taking my call. Um, Fred, it was great to, to hear you and see you stand up today and, and give uh, Jackie shit right back in his face. I love that. <laughs> I really did, man. I, it's, 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 uh, it, was a, it was a great segment you guys did today. Um, and, and already I wanted to, uh, to piggyback on that thought. Um, you're going to be down in Lakeland. I've never gone and purchased a, a ticket to, to a stand-up act. I got tickets for my girlfriend and I, and we're really psyched about coming down. Uh, I'm coming over, actually, from where I live uh, to Lakeland. And any any chance whatsoever uh, I could meet you backstage just to shake your hand and, and say, hey, is that is that even remotely possible? Uh, yeah, it is, sure. I mean, you know, the, the shows are pretty loose. If you... If you come by the dressing area afterwards, uh, we'll find you, definitely. Bring a okay, hot chick, so, though. <clears throat> yeah, I got a hot chick as a girlfriend. No problem. That'll a hot help. chick who says she'll do uh, Artie and you'll get in. That'll help. Artie, Artie who's on the bill for Lakeland? <laughs> it's uh, Gary Delabate. And, but who else is Myself, on? Bob Levy, uh, Sal, Richard, uh, Shuley, uh, the whole uh, uh, Jim, are you coming to that? Oh, Jim isn't. It's it's basically the whole gang from the show. That's a very rare thing. We don't do that a lot, but it's it's everybody on the show works here full time. I think, except for Levy, he'd like to. And it's the whole Bubba crew as well, right? Or a Bubba's lot of it. coming out. Bubba's going to say hi. Oh Brent. my God, this is going to this show is going to be a four hour show. It's, it's going to be, be uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be shit. insanity. It'll be a big party, and that's March twenty third, Lakeland, Florida. Ticketmaster. Anything else you anything else you need to plug, Artie? 